It was a pretty rough season for Napoli, especially the ending. To be honest, they were doing pretty well and Napoli were going to get Champions League football. But on the final match day of the Serie A, they drew and that meant Juventus finished fourth and Napoli are heading to the Europa League. And I guess that makes Napoli a perfect fit for a fixing challenge, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. I think it's going to be a real challenge getting to the top of the Serie A, competing with the likes of Juventus and now Inter Milan as well. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Plus, the goal being to win the Champions League with Napoli. It's going to be a tremendous challenge. And if you guys are exciting for this week's Fixing Friday, I'd really appreciate if you could spare a second and drop a like in the video. Let's shoot for 6,000 likes. I know you guys can do it. It really helps the channel out. It only takes a second to drop a like on the video. So go on there and drop a like. Subscribe as well for daily FIFA career mode content. And let's get it. The rules of today's challenge are as follows. The objective is to win the Champions League. We can make any signings we want. But also, we're going to have to have five Italians in our starting 11. Hey, Italy have made it to the Euros final. It's only fitting we have an objective like that. We've got to, of course, simulate every single game that we play but once we do get to that champions league final that's a game we do play to wrap up the challenge okay so starting off the napoli fixing challenge season one we've got a few really good players lorenzo insignia probably one of the best players in the euros this year three smertens is going to be a star for us fabian as well a strong back line of koulibaly and manolas and lozano as well so a lot of talent in here how many italians do we have insignia that's about it, I think. Di Lorenzo. Yo, getting five Italians might actually be a challenger because they don't really have all that many. I didn't, I didn't realize that, guys. On the bench, there are definitely a few. But this is going to be a challenge with the objective we've set ourselves with. What are we looking at budget-wise? 56 million. Okay, okay. We've definitely got the money. Okay, I like this a lot. We've got Christian Russo, the Italian from the academy. I'm pretty sure he's the homegrown player. We haven't used um, the academy player in one of these fixing challenges for a while. So this might be the perfect moment. He's got great stats all round. We're obviously going to loan him out for the first season. But I wouldn't be surprised if he takes that starting spot for us. Because we need to have Italians in this setup. Five of them. So it'll be crucial to get Christian Russo involved. For now though, we're going to loan him out. Oh my. Imagine we cash in on Koulibaly. 98.3 million oh my god what's his age he's 29 damn i know he's super high rated uh, i might need to think about this guys i might need to think about this also locatelli we're scouting him just a quick spoiler we might be going in for him you know what guys i want to negotiate with barcelona just to see you know what guys if i can get 130 million for Koulibaly, you know what i'm okay with letting him go because we're not gonna win the champions league in our first season so getting the cash to just build a good base from season one might be the smart play. We never do this normally in the fixing challenges. They're willing to go up to 106 million. Wow. Okay, okay. Do we do we try 120? I don't want to go below that. 120 million for Kalido Kulibali. They've actually accepted. No way. We're actually going to be selling a player, a big star player for once. I didn't expect to do this. Wow, this is actually huge, guys. We're selling Koulibaly for 120 million. Expect to see some big signings happening in this window. And we've made our first signing of this challenge in Locatelli, one of the star players of the Euros this year. He's only 80 rated, but the fact that we managed to sign him for like 34 million, well under his valuation, seems like a proper good deal, guys. So, Pretty happy about this. I can't believe I've actually done this. I've sold Koulibaly to Barcelona. Is this going to be a decision that comes back to haunt me? I've got no idea. Only time will tell. Another Italian joins our team as we sign Romagnoli to, of course, Napoli. Top class signing, I feel he's going to be the replacement for Koulibaly. Overall wise, there's no comparison. But hey, he's an investment, I guess, for the future. He'll give us five or six good seasons. So I'm okay with this. Now, the good thing is we've still got 
about 90 million left and i think we can still improve a lot of this team this time we're moving away from our italian themed signings and we're signing a brazilian from real betis in real life now barcelona but emerson was available for 23 million and he's valued at 30 million i thought this is a no-brainer he's got the potential to be one of the best right backs in the game and i had to snap him up and that's exactly what we've done another very very smart signing the last time an uruguayan was leaving Leading the line for Napoli, he managed to break all sorts of records for them. And we've brought another Uruguayan to Napoli in Maxi Gomez from Valencia. We had to kind of overpay for him for about like 42 million or so, but I think it's going to be worth it. Some of his stats already are insane. He's going to be a very clinical striker for us, I feel. And I think he'll be good rotation between him and Osman. So, yep, I think it's a fantastic signing. We're still left with quite a bit of money if we look at it. 30 million, but I might keep that for January. Guys, I do feel like I'm taking a massive risk not signing an improved goalkeeper. But since Merit is Italian, super high potential. The only way to get his overall up is by having him in goal. It's a bit of a risk, but I'm willing to take that. Let's hope he can grow massively this season. This is how our team is going to be looking like for season one. Season 1 itself, there's just been so much happening in terms of signings and also it's a different Napoli team. Let's see how we fare this season. Let's see if we can start off the season with a Super Cup win. I, I, I don't think I'm expecting to win here, but let's just see. Yeah, I think it's too early to expect us to beat Juventus. They beat us 3-1 in the Italian Supercoppa. Simming through until January, I genuinely feel like the decision of not signing a keeper, that's going to be the make or break call. Is it going to be enough? To get us through season one, we'll have to wait and find out. Bakayoko recalled by Chelsea and Politano by Inter. That is not a good look for us. Oh, well, willing to strengthen our team in January, I guess. Guys, 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 guys. How are we second in the league? I'm, I'm surprised. And Juventus seventh? No way. We're eight points clear of Juve. I didn't expect this, especially after selling Koulibaly. What's happened? Who has been the players delivering for us? This is honestly a bit mad. Yo, we're having a very successful first season. Getting into the Champions League for next season is a goal, but we might just have an outside chance of winning the Serie A. We've managed to top our Europa League group as well, undefeated. What a successful first season this has been. I guess sacrificing Koulibaly and improving the overall squad was the right play. Hey, look at the ratings on a lot of our players. They've grown fairly massively, like Romagnoli's up to an 84, Emerson up to an 80, Maxi Gomez doing okay, Lozano as well. Things you do love to see. Ossiman has gone up to an 83. we got to make him a starter now. That is a bit insane. I I'll tell you that. Yo, the team is looking great. But we've got cash. And I want to invest in January. So let's get into making some signings. One part of the team that I really wasn't impressed with was that left back spot. High Sarge just wasn't growing. So might as well sign a left back. And I've gone ahead and signed Owen Weindahl. Hopefully I've said his name right. For 35 million, 21 year old Dutchman incredible stats guys the potential is there as well and if like emerson he can grow massively will be sorted all right guys so this is what we have until the end of the season i'm pretty happy with it i'm just hoping we can see merit really pick up in his overall because he's really like lagging behind everyone else we need him to pick up his overall otherwise we might have to bring in a new keeper next season so let's him until the end of this season and see how we do oh my god we took it all the way to the end just about we've managed to qualify for Champions League next season as we finish fourth in the Serie A. Juventus finish fifth. So similar to what happened in real life, but only thing is we didn't bottle like how Napoli did in real life. So Champions League, we're back in it. Inter win the Serie A. Milan finish second. Look at the amount of draws we had, 14. Wow, if we could have just converted a few of them to wins, we could be looking at maybe a championship. But anyways, good season. Actually, things are not over just yet because we've got a Europa League final up against Manchester United. Can we get the better of Man United in a cup final and win our first piece of silverware? Let's see. Oh, we've done it. Osimhen scoring a 90th minute winner for this. Let's go, man. First season massive massive success europa league in the bag and also fourth spot in the Serie A. we've built a really strong team for season two now let's go osimin was our top scorer this season he's gone up by five ratings i didn't even anticipate him being the starter this season but he's just been unreal 29 and 54 insignia with an amazing season mertens as well but look at him go down in his overall that's super frustrating lozano did well 
We had Fabian doing fairly okay. Maxi Gomez needs to do a bit better, but at least he's going up in his rating. Locatelli with a fairly good season, especially going up by four ratings. Emerson up by five. Yo, the signings we've made have stepped up big time. Season 2 begins with Napoli now. Last season, we built a pretty great foundation. I mean, I'm loving the look of this team. It's a bit different, you know. We're not using the same players we normally sign, at least. And I think this season, the goal has got to be to improve that cam spot. And I think we can definitely get that sorted. Plus, maybe a centre-back to improve upon Manolas. Also, a goalkeeper, maybe to replace Ospina and compete with Merit. So, ideas are definitely there. We'll just have to figure out what works best for the club. We're looking at 157 million to spend. That's huge. First signing of season two is a massive one in Danny Olmo. Again, a player who's been superb in the Euros this year. He's going to be the future in that camp spot ahead of Dries Mertens very, very soon. He's only 82 rated, but we know the potential. I had to pay 70 million for him because RB Leipzig weren't budging from their asking price so yeah big money spent on him but i think in the end it's gonna be worth it no guys no man i hate this fabian was one of our best players real madrid met his release clause i didn't even like oh come on i should have checked the release clauses on our players man oh my god now we'll have to replace fabian as well which is gonna be very very difficult Ah, that's a tough one. That's a really tough blow to deal with. He was one of our stars. Talk about a replacement, guys. We've just signed Nicolo Barella from Inter, weakening one of the contenders for the Serie A. This might be huge for us. We had to pay big bucks for him, 95 million. But then again, we just got a huge influx of cash from the Fabian deal. Might as well invest it in a player like Barella. Look at his stats. He's going to be perfect in that midfield with Locatelli and, of course, Olmo. I'm loving the look of our team and this should help us with the Italian objective as well. So all in all, this is a big win. Guys, we continue to invade Inter as we've signed Bastoni from them as well. I kind of wanted a centre back to, you know, lead the back line with Romagnoli in the future. Bastoni just seems like the perfect fit and we got him for like 44 million. I don't know what on earth inter were doing selling him for such a cheap deal but there you go another top class signing we're still not done with our transfers just yet i think i've got a couple more to make but until then we've got a uefa super cup final against city let's get this one out of the way i don't expect to win this and yeah it's a 2-1 win for Manchester City. Fair play. This is probably going to be our final transfer of season two. I kind of wanted a winger who can play on either side, giving us more squad depth. And David Neres is literally just that. So for 48 million, we've completed that transfer. All right, guys, that's going to be our team for season two. I think it's looking incredible. We've got a lot of squad depth in so many different positions. I'm ready, man. We're in the Champions League as well this season. Let's see how we fare. Can we win the Serie A? Can we get a dream run in the Champions League? I don't know, but we'll see. Oh my god, it's all coming together this season, isn't it? We might end up winning the Serie A with Napoli. Juventus have fought back to the top four, but look at Inter. Signing Barella and Bastoni from them have threw them into free fall. They're eighth in the league. That's how you eliminate competition, I guess. Atalanta in second spot, though, five offers. But we're, we're sitting very comfortable to win the Serie A this season, guys. Let's make it happen. What about the Champions League? Have we topped our group? Yes, we have. Haven't lost a single game. Last season, we won the Europa League. I think, yep, we did. This season, Champions League, it'd be, it'd be crazy if we managed to do it. In the round of 16, a favourable draw against Fenerbahce. A lot of interesting teams, guys. I don't see a lot of the regulars. Where's Real Madrid? Oh, there they are. Barcelona aren't in here. A big surprise. Hey, just look at the player growth on some of the players, man. It's mental. Everybody's morale is sky high. I think if we had like a Donnarumma in goal, we'd be winning everything. But we're trusting merit for this season. Let's just hope it goes well. Insignia hitting an 89 is genuinely mental. We're gonna just like keep this squad now i don't think it makes sense making any transfers in january let's just push through until the end of the season and see how we fare can we maybe make a champions league final wrapping up a napoli fixing challenge in two seasons would be big here we go guys champions league first leg against fenerbahce in the round of 16 i think we're heavy favorites for this first leg itself only a one nil win but it's the away leg so it does benefit us so Let's see if we can wrap things up in the second leg. Honestly, I feel like we've got a good shot at winning the Champions League this year because 
We're practically winning every game in the Serie A, or at least we're not losing at all. It's actually mad how good of a team that we've built. And it's all because in that first season, when the offer came in for Koulibaly, I got a lot of money for it. And that allowed me to improve the overall quality of the squad. And that was huge. Let's hopefully see things out in the second leg. We're playing at home. We should be able to get this done. It was close, but we got it done. In extra time, by the way, because they managed to get an equalizer. But hey, we're through to the quarterfinals. Maybe this shows we're still not there yet for a team to win the Champions League. The luck continues with us as we've avoided a lot of the big teams and we're up against Spurs in the quarterfinals. I definitely fancy our chance to make, of course, the semi-finals. Also, with the way the draw has been planned, a team like Man City or Liverpool is going to be out, Inter or Real Madrid. So it's, it's very convenient for us. I'm just saying... Might be our season here. On paper, Spurs do have a lot of quality. Kane, Son, Bonucci, Davinson, Sanchez. They've got a good team, but so do we. First leg's going to be key. And it's a 1-0 win for Spurs. Hyungman Son scoring. We'll need to make a comeback in the second leg. Let's see if that's even possible. Honestly, guys, I'll be really disappointed if we can't get past Spurs in the Champions League. Let's hope for a comeback. It's only a one all draw. No way. Everything was in our favor, but we can't even get past Spurs. <sighs> Out of the Champions League, guys. So our first run of the Champions League ends with a disaster. We'll have to come back next season for more. In other news, I was forced to sell Maxi Gomez to Manchester City because that's what he wanted. He wasn't happy at Napoli, so we sold him for 55 million. Next season, we'll have to make some adjustments for that striker spot. Okay, we've got a cup final though. A chance to win some silverware this season. At least it'll help us cope with the disappointment in the Champions League. But up against Lazio, we've got to beat them, man, with the team we've got especially. It was close, but on penalties, we managed to win the Italian Cup. Ah, thank God for that. That's a big relief. I actually can't believe it, man. How have we let this happen? We've actually lost the Serie A to Juventus by a point. I, I refuse to believe this. This is outrageous. We were top of the league convincingly halfway through the season and then we've gone and done this. I'm pretty sure that Champions League defeat was the reason why this happened. Osimhen once again our top scorer with 31 goals this season and look at the player growth on him. He's up by three ratings as well. Lozano with a solid season. All modded brilliantly. Insigne slowed down a bit, but still pretty good stats. Barella has proven to being a big signing. Yeah, but next season, it's got to improve. There's no two ways about it, guys. This season, we've got to win titles. I feel like we've got the team to make that happen as well. So let's freaking do it. I've got a few ideas for, you know, signings and all. Definitely a new keeper. That's probably where I'm going to invest a large chunk of the money. We trusted Medet, but that's kind of backfired on us. So that's going to be one of the aims. Good thing is, 175 million in the bank. We're definitely getting ourselves a top class keeper, that's for sure. Actually, guys, it's way more than that because of the fact that we sold Maxi Gomez. It's 220 million we're dealing with. I'm pretty sure you guys had a slight idea of the goalkeeper I was gonna sign. It had to be Donnarumma, literally breaking the bank for him. 160 million, and we've managed to sign him from, of course, AC Milan, weakening a rival and practically bringing the highest rated keeper in the game, or at least one of them. And that's how the team looks like. I'll be real, guys. I don't think we need to make any improvements. I am absolutely delighted with this team. Maybe we take a replacement for Manolas or something along those lines. But apart from that, maybe we'll look at that in January. For now, though, I'm very content. I think this team is more than capable of winning the Champions League. So, yup, let's just go for it, man. This has to be the season where we win it all, even the Serie A. Starting off the season with the Italian Super Cup. We've lost this a fair few times already. Let's hope we can win it now. Come on. On penalties, we take the L. <sighs> okay, I, I, I'm confused on how to feel. We've actually been pretty decent, guys, um, in the Serie A. Just two losses, no draws, 15 wins. But Juventus have been on another level. And that's why they lead the league by four points. So I'm not sure what to make of this because we've scored the most goals in the league and conceded the least, yet it's Juve at the top. Hopefully things can change towards the second half of the season. What are we looking at in terms of the Champions League? Have we topped our group? Yup, we have. Not a perfect record in the group, but I'll take it, guys. First in the group, that's what matters. And we face Monaco. 
in the round of 16. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of the big boys back in the Champions League knockouts this season. It's going to make it harder for us. As I said, guys, I feel like this team is as complete as it gets. We don't need to make any more signings. We're just going to run with it. Here we go. Our second attempt at the Champions League. I think the team that we've got has got to be making it at least to the semi-finals. So let's hopefully see the better of Monaco. And we managed to see them out in the first leg. 3-1. Let's go. With that advantage from the first leg, we should be seeing them out in the second. That's exactly what we've done. And I love the fact that we kept a clean sheet as well. Yeah, I don't think I like this, guys. We've drawn Bayern Munich in the Champions League quarterfinals. That's what I was saying. Last season, we had a better chance to win the Champions League than this season. Because the teams left in this competition are just crazy, crazy good. Let's see if we can get the better of Bayern. I, I, I really don't know what's going to happen in this one. First leg, Napoli, Bayern. They've got Phil Ford and Lewandowski, of course. Goretzka, Kimmich, Longley. Okay, that gives me a bit of hope. We need a good result. 2-0 win. Yo, how did this happen? The long live factor, I guess. Neres and Osimhen scoring. Come on. We can't mess up after having a 2-0 advantage from the first leg just now. And it's another 2-0 win. Locatelli and Insigne scoring for us. And we're in the semi-finals. So Manchester United knocked out Liverpool. Real Madrid knocked out City. Atletico go through against Lyon. In the semi-finals, it's Real Madrid versus Napoli. Okay. Not gonna lie, I'm pretty confident about this. Especially since we knocked out Bayern in the quarters and there you go that confidence has paid off napoli 2-0 against madrid 2-0 up from the first leg this one we should just be able to see this out especially at home i'll take the two all draw way through to a champions league final come on we do find ourselves playing a cup final we won this uh, the italian cup last season and we've done it again this season beating cagliari 3-1 in the final the Serie A season has come to an end and it was close but towards the end we've managed to pip juventus for the title what a comeback we've scored 90 goals more goals scored least conceded and we've won this area. We're on course for winning the treble, guys, in our third season with Napoli. That's actually going to happen if we, of course, wrap things up in uh, the final against, of course, who's it going to be? Against Manchester United. So I'm definitely excited about this. But what a season so far. Serie A and the Italian Cup in the bag. Osimhen with a 40 gold season. I can't wait to try him out in-game. The man is on fire. What a season. Lozano with 29, Insigne with 17, Ned has been a good substitute with 11, Olmo with a good season, Yo, our left back popping up with 13 assists, the most from our team. That's a bit mental, isn't it? Locatelli with a strong season, Barella as well. Yo, the team is looking insane. I mean, look at the overalls on this. It's anyways time for the Champions League final. Do we, by the way, have five Italians in the team? I didn't even notice or to counterfeit. I think we do. Insigne, Locatelli, Barella, Romagnoli and Donnarumma. That should be five. Okay, we're sorted. That's the team I'm rocking, guys. No changes to it. Insigne, Olmo, Osimhen, Lozano, Locatelli. All of them start. Manolas captains the team. We've got Donnarumma in goal. Manchester United have got Sergio Aguero. That just feels wrong. Honestly, it just feels wrong. You can't be doing that game. Upamecano and Pique at the back for them. A very interesting Man United team. They've signed Bukayo Saka as well. Anyways, let's get into it. Here we go, guys. I'm absolutely excited about this. This just looks wrong. Sergio Aguero in a Man United shirt. Nah, man. EA, you can't be doing that. That just, that's just wrong. Like, please. Anyways, here we go for the final. Let's wrap the challenge up. I, I think we've got the team to make this happen. We've won the Serie A, we've won the Cup. Let's back the treble and get done with this challenge. Here goes our left back. By the way, this guy is like one of our top... In fact, he is our top assister this season. Maybe there's a reason for it. Look at him go. I might just go for goal with him. Ah, that was off target. There weren't really options coming in in the box from Osman. He just stopped his run for some weird reason. So I went for goal. Decent attempt, I'd say. Maybe he should have kept it on target at least. Locatelli with a good pass for almost. He's Lorenzo Insigne. Would be fitting for him to get on the score sheet here. Insigne gets the goal. Lorenzo Insigne against Manchester United scores in the Champions League final. What a finish as well. He managed to cut inside so easily. That's the low center of gravity that he possesses. Managed to get past PK, who's of course not in his prime anymore, so kind of expected. But 1-0 up against Man United in this final. Things you do love to see. Oh, that's a good ball out wide for Saka. Bukayo Saka. 
Ah, oh, he could go for the cutback. He's just gone for goal because I blocked all passing lanes for Aguero. That actually worked. And Donnarumma did the rest. Bruno Fernandes. We can't let him shoot. Oh, that's a good challenge. How is that going to be a free kick? Come on. Is that going to be Rashford taking? Interesting. I'm going to move the keeper slightly. But if he goes far post, I will be screwed. Aguero takes it. Donnarumma knew what's up. Oof. Varela. That's a very intelligent pass for Ossiman. Who tries to bring it inside. Smartly done. Looks for Danny Olmo. Who goes for the chip. That is outrageous from Danny Olmo. Sees Manchester United's keeper dive to the right side, chips it to the left. No chance for him. Napoli cruising against Man United in this final. To be fair, it's as expected. On paper, our team is looking so much better than theirs. This was bound to happen as we make it 2-0 before halftime, which is pretty amazing. Look at that for a finish. No chance for Big Dean Henderson. 2-0 up, guys. We're winning this. Scott McDominay now out wide for Diogo Dalot. Sliding in, I shouldn't have done that. That's a silly booking for, I think, our left back. Yep, it is. It's it's a very silly booking, guys, for Windle. Unnecessary. Halftime, boys. Everything is going according to plan. We just got to keep things up and we'll be lifting that Champions League trophy. Oh, Lorenzo Insignia has broken through. I see Lozano making a good run. Oh, it's gone for Ossim in the header. is off target, though. We could have... Ended the game right there, making it 3-0. Oh, Emerson has just blasted past everyone. Looks for Ossiman now. Oh, goes down. That's that's a good challenge from PK. I was going to ask for the free kick, but no, nah, it wasn't really. Lozano could slide this one for Danny Olmo. Goes through another goal here, maybe for Danny Olmo. Of course it is, and it's done. Manchester United are taking the L in this Champions League final. Olmo scores our second. By the way, he needs a game face for FIFA 22. Napoli 3, Manchester United 0, and that is job freaking done for us. That should pretty much secure the title for us. We've made Napoli champions of Europe, guys. Three seasons. We maybe could have done it last season, but getting knocked out by Spurs was... Yeah, a bit of finale, but we came into season three, signed Donnarumma, and we've got the job done. Almost scoring a brace for us in this one. Napoli three, Manchester United nil. Huge, huge season to wrap things up. And I've got to say, this was tremendous fun with Napoli. I didn't expect to enjoy this challenge so much. We used a lot of different players, which made it a lot of fun. We made Insigne really, really OP in this one. And of course, Ossiman up top, Olmo was crazy good in the final. I really enjoyed this one. Maradona would definitely be proud of this, you know, seeing Napoli win the Champions League. But hey, that's it. That's going to be it for, of course, today's Fixing Napoli Challenge. If you've enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it. If you could spare a second and drop a like on the video. It really helps the channel grow. Subscribe as well for daily FIFA content. And I'm going to leave it here with Manolas lifting the Champions League trophy. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.